Do we leave it there and move on? <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia, your question in this round to uh, Congressman Zimmer, please. Congressman, with your background as a lobbyist this week, you have a hard time finding a job in John McCain's campaign because last week he told lobbyists to quit his campaign. His reputation as a reformer was being tarnished. My question is, what are you going to do in your campaign to keep push back the influence of big money? Um, I've been a, a leader in the fight for political reform, including lobbying reform. Uh, I, when I was in Congress, I uh, sponsored legislation uh, to uh, increase uh, the period of time between which uh, a, a, a member could leave Congress and then come back and lobby Congress from one year to five years. And I adhere to that standard, even though it didn't become law. Um, I believe that uh, lobbying is a constitutionally protected right, and it makes government better as long as we, uh, we have it completely open and above board. And lobbyist disclosure has been improved in the last year as a result of some terrible scandals. But you know, uh, beyond making the lobbyists disclose more, I think members of Congress and senators ought to disclose their contacts with the lobbyists who meet with them. Uh, I think the public could understand a lot better what's going on in that picture. And I intend to pursue that as a United States Dr. Senator. Dr. Sabrin, you have a uh, response. For more than 30 years, I've been a lobbyist for liberty, limited government, and free enterprise. As a United States Senator, no lobbyist will come to my office seeking any benefit from the federal government because I will not be voting for any specific benefits for any individual, group, region of the country. I, my goal will be to do things that is for the general welfare of the American people, not for the specific welfare of any individual region or uh, group. That's why we have the mess that we have today. We have people going to Washington because they're spending $3 trillion of our money. That's wrong. That's Time why we need to that? downsize the federal Senator government. Senator Panaccio. Dick Sim is right. When he was in Congress, he railed against lobbyists. No sooner did he get out of Congress than he becomes one. Frank Lautenberg, when he was told that Dick is in the race, said, he's a lobbyist, isn't he? Lobbyists don't become elected officials. Isn't it the other way around? And what's more disheartening is that you have a lobbyist who lives and works in Washington, is able to take a tax credit where he only pays $169 on 22 acres of his estate in New Jersey. Just not fair. Congressman Zimmer, your rebuttal. Well, um, <clears throat> since Frank Lautenberg has been quoted in this Republican debate, I can tell you uh, that one of my proudest achievements and my most recent achievement as a lobbyist has been to lobby for legislation that allows victims of terrorism to recover damages from terrorist states. Uh, I represented the families of the military men who were killed in the Beirut barracks bombing uh, and who had won an award against the government of Iran which was responsible for that bombing. I'm proud of that work, Time is despite up. the fact that Frank Lautenberg was the sponsor of that. We have to move provision. it along to Michael Aaron and your question for Dr. Sabrin. Mr. Sabrin, uh, Mr. Zimmer just brought up Iran. Uh, do you agree with Barack Obama that the president should be willing to sit down with the leader of a potentially hostile power like Iran? Uh, I'm old enough to remember, uh, Michael, the staunch anti-communist Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon, went to Beijing and toasted with the butchers of Beijing. Gentlemen who killed 40 million plus of their own people. He negotiated with China. He negotiated with the Soviet Union. Ronald Reagan negotiated with, with uh, Gorbachev. There's nothing wrong with negotiations. Death and destruction are worse than negotiations. We need to negotiate with people around the world so we have a peaceful world, we have a prosperous world, and we can do these cultural changes all over the world. That's the type of vision I will bring to Washington, D.C. We've had enough war and death and destruction for the past 100 years. 200 million people have died, countless victims of war, countless destruction of private property and enterprise. I will be a leader for free enterprise, peace, trade, and all the things that Western civilization has created. There's no reason that we should not negotiate with anybody in the world. How else do you reach a conclusion if you don't negotiate? Your 30-second response, Senator. Negotiations is a two-way street. Uh, do we negotiate with despots and people that, that harm their own people, like in Cuba, who is willing to go to Cuba? Or do we put pressure on them diplomatically and say, listen, until you 
observe human rights, until you start being fairer and more equitable to your own people, then you can start joining the community of people within our uh, called nations. Otherwise, we have to put that pressure diplomatically. That's not to say that we can't talk to people, but certainly we shouldn't do an Obama where we, the Obama is already committing himself to meeting with, with Despot. Congressman Zimmer. Well, this country should and it does have contacts at low level and indirectly with virtually every government in the world. Uh, what Obama has proposed that I think is a bad idea is to have a summit conference between the American president and say the president of Iran with no preconditions. That's a propaganda coup for the leader of that country uh, who is very hostile to us, who uh, is uh, making weapons that are killing our military men and, uh, and who uh, has sought the destruction of Israel. Mr. With Sabrin, your rebuttal, please. Uh, after I win this primary, I will go to Cuba. I will go to Cuba and open up a dialogue with the Castros. And I will tell them there are three evils in this world. Socialism, which they've overseen for m more than 50 years. Trade sanctions, which harm innocent people. And abortion, which destroys innocent human life. That's the type of policies I will bring to Washington, D.C. Governments should not harm innocent people. Governments around the world are harming their own people and their neighbors. That has to stop. We have to negotiate peaceful relations around the world. Michael, you'd like another question? If you agree with Obama on negotiating with Ahmadinejad, uh, can you, and, and if you win the nomination, can you campaign with Senator McCain in the fall on such a high-profile issue as this? I said when I came into this race, I will support the Republican nominee. That doesn't mean I'm going to be robo-senator. I'm not going to join lockstep with the President of the United States, whether it's a Republican or Democrat, on any issue. I, like John McCain, will put country above party. And my oath of office is to the Constitution of the United States. My oath is to make sure that our borders are secure, our economy is free, our civil liberties are protected. That's what I bring to Washington, D.C. as the next senator from the state of New Jersey. 